Welcome to Tabletop Ready, my name's Michael and I want to show you in this video how you can get started with painting Warhammer miniatures. I'm going to show you step by step some of the techniques used in the miniature painting hobby and help you build the confidence and knowledge to be able to start a lifelong passion. Painting your first miniature can be really scary. So in this video I'm going to be showing you some of the ideas and techniques that I've learned through the many years of painting miniatures. And I'm going to show you some of the things that I wish someone would have shown me when I first started out. So let's get started. For this tutorial I'm going to limit myself to the things I suggest buying and items you may already have around the house to make it easy as possible for you. The products that I think would be a great starting place for anyone is this paints and tool set. A getting started with Warhammer 40,000 magazine, a large base brush and a medium dry brush. In the paints and tool set you get 13 paints, a pair of clippers, a scraping tool and a starter brush. The magazine is also a great resource as well. Not only do you get two miniatures, a space marine and a necron warrior to explore painting, but the magazine is full of all the information about what the Warhammer hobby involves, from painting your miniatures, playing the tabletop strategy game and also goes through some of the background and lore of the 41st millennium. It also has tons of artwork and pictures to get you inspired. The dry brush and base brush, along with the brush you get in the tools and paint set, will let you explore some of the different techniques I'm going to show you in this video. For these products I spent a total of £47.75p, which I think is a great price for everything you get, and to try out a hobby for the first time to see if you enjoy it. Next you're going to need to create a space to paint. Perhaps you've got a desk already, or even just a tabletop somewhere. You just need to make sure you're comfortable and it's well lit so you can see what you're doing. As well as the items I've suggested buying, I'm going to be using some things that I tend to have around the house for this tutorial. So if you want to follow along as well, you're going to need some scissors, any kind of tape you may have, some blue tack, two pots of water and some paper towel. I also want to show you how you can use some of these items we already have to make some things that are going to help us when painting the miniatures. First of all you're going to need a palette. The container the miniatures came in is perfect for this. So using the scissors cut the lid off and this can be used for our palette. Now I'm going to fold out the box and using the scissors again cut away any side strips and tabs. We want to keep our painting area clean and tidy so we're going to tape down the section of the box we have left over in the area you're going to be painting. The tape just prevents the box from moving around. We're going to be making some painting handles next which we can place some miniatures on. So we have something to hold on to making painting more comfortable and preventing us from touching the miniatures too much. Using two of the side strips we cut from the box, wrap each one around one of your brushes then use some tape to keep the shape. Blue tack can then be used to secure your miniatures in place ready for painting. We now have everything you're going to need to build and paint the miniatures so let's get started. When you get yourself some miniatures, they will generally be on what is called a sprue, especially if they're plastic like these miniatures. To remove the parts from the sprue you're going to need the clippers. Go around cutting all the connections keeping the parts in place, making sure to keep the flat side of the clippers against the part you're cutting off the sprue. Once you've done that, you'll notice that where you cut the connection it doesn't look very good and you'll also see the mould lines which we want to clean up. This is what the scraping tool is for. Being very careful and applying a small amount of pressure, you can scrape away any of the mould lines and even out the areas where the sprue connections were. Take your time cleaning up all the parts. Now it's time to put the parts together to make our Space Marine and Necron Warrior. And one of the reasons I got these miniatures is because you don't need any glue. They're easily pushed together. To see how they go together, make sure to follow the instructions on page 2 of the Getting Started magazine. I'm now going to recommend cleaning the miniatures using some warm soapy water. This is going to remove any release agent from the moulding process, but also any debris that may be left over from building them. The reason I suggest this is because it's going to help when it comes to painting the miniatures. Let me quickly show you how I've set up my painting area so you can make sure you have everything ready to start painting. The 
first thing we're going to do is paint our miniatures in a solid colour to create a base foundation for all the other steps we're going to go through after this. Let's start with the Space Marine. The paint we're going to use for the Space Marine base colour is going to be McCrag Blue. Make sure to give it a good shake first and then using the large base brush put some paint on the palette and then add the same amount of water to it. Controlling the consistency of your paint is the most important thing you're going to learn as a beginner and as an experienced painter. If your paint is too thick you'll lose the detail in your miniature and if your paint is too thin it's going to be difficult to build up any colour. The palette is a good place to get a feel for the paint and brush. Have a little practice first before moving on to the miniature. You can do this on the base where it's not as important to get right. I'll also use some paper towel to remove excess paint from the brush giving me more control when I'm painting. Find a position you're comfortable painting. Place your arms on the tabletop or to your body and try to keep your hands connected. This will create a steady hand and stop your brush from wandering all over the place. And when you're ready to start painting, make sure to keep your brush moving and spread the paint around evenly and avoid going over the areas you've already painted. You don't want to create unwanted texture which happens if you move the paint around whilst it's drying. And make sure to let the paint dry before doing anything else. You'll find once that layer is dried, it hasn't covered the model very well. That's okay though, it's better to do multiple thin layers than one thick layer. Doing the exact same thing, you now want to paint a second layer of McCrag Blue and repeat this process until you have a nice solid colour. We're now going to do the same thing with the Necron Warrior but this time we're going to be using a bad and black instead of McGrag Blue. What I've shown you painting the base colours is going to be the same when it comes to painting everything else. It's such an important basic skill and makes all the difference when painting miniatures. Even though in this video I'm going to be showing you how to paint your first miniatures, I really want to help you understand the fundamentals and basics of painting. And I'm not going to be showing you everything you'd ever need to know in this video. Everything you'd ever really need to know is going to be based upon what I do show you. At the moment the miniature is looking pretty flat, so we want to start bringing out all that detail. You'll often hear people talk about definition. Let's have a look at this picture of a space marine. It looks flat and although the shape is there, you can't see any of the details. But once you add some lines to the picture, you can now see the details you couldn't before. This is essentially what we're now going to do to our miniature. There's two ways you can do this. The first method, and something that is taught to a lot of new beginners, is using a wash or shade. Some of the paints will be labelled as a shade, and it's these that tend to be used. To use the shade, all you need to do is apply the shade all over the miniature, making sure it's completely covered. It's better to spread it around as evenly as possible. If you're enjoying my content, make sure to like the video and leave a comment which I'll be sure to reply to. You can also follow me on Instagram and if you want to show me how you're getting on with your first miniatures you can show me on the r slash tabletop ready subreddit. You'll find that the shade likes to pull in the details and not so much on the raised areas. This is what it's meant to do. But it can pull up too much. If you see this happening then you can use your brush to soak up any excess shade you don't want. And then make sure to let this completely dry before doing anything else. The second method I'm going to show you is the method I'm going to be using on our Space Marine. This is a recess shade, and unlike the wash I've just shown you, we're going to create the definition by directly applying the shade to the areas we imagine being darker or in shadow. Using the start brush, go around the miniature and paint the shade into any joins and areas where the armour panels meet. Just take your time and don't worry about being too neat at this stage, because we can always clean up any mistakes later. Let's compare both methods quickly. When you use a wash it's going to affect any colour you've already painted, whereas the recess shade lets us create the definition without affecting those colours. We're going to continue working with the Space Marine for the time being, and then we can apply what we've learned to paint our Necron Warrior. Our Space Marine is not only going to be blue, so we're now going to block in all the other colours. This will give us a chance to practice some more painting. Using a bad and black, we're going to paint the joints in between the armour, the weapons 
and belt and pouch around the waist. Always remember multiple thin layers is better, so take your time painting these details. Even though you want to be as neat as possible, it's okay if you're a bit messy, and there are places where you're definitely going to be. Once we're done with that, it's time to paint the metallic details. We're going to be using lead belcher for the silver details and retributor armour for the gold details on the marine. Make sure to give the paints a good shake first. These metallic paints are used and thinned down exactly like you would any other paint. The silver details we're going to be painting are on the weapons, backpack and helmet. And the gold details are going to be the chest eagle, shoulder trims and chainsaw pommel. Remember to always take your time when painting, there's no rush. The miniatures I painted for this tutorial were painted over a couple of days. They don't need to be finished in one sitting. Just enjoy the process. We're going to finish blocking in the colours by painting the parchment paper with Corex White. Then the wax seal with Mephiston Red which I'm also going to use to paint the lenses of the helmet. When you're done, the Space Marine should look something like this. Remember when I showed you how to use a shade? Well, that's what we're going to do now, but it's only going to be on the metallic details we painted, the purity seal and the lenses. I like to put the shade on a palette first before applying it to the miniature. I also add a small amount of water to weaken the strength. This helps me to have more control how much I'm using because we don't want to overdo it while focusing on smaller details. Make sure to let the shade fully dry. The Space Marine is looking pretty messy after all the painting and shading we've been doing and this is a good time to neaten up the miniature before we move on to highlighting. Take your time going over the places you think could do with cleaning up but being careful to keep the definition we created earlier. We're now ready for some highlights on our Marine. I hope you're ready. Everything in the world interacts with light, creating highlights and shadows, and this is essentially what people are trying to replicate on their miniatures. I've already covered creating shadows, so I now want to go over highlighting your miniatures. To start, you're going to need to mix a little Corax white into some Macrag blue, and thin this down with a small amount of water. And the same as before, I'll remove excess paint on some paper towel to help give me more control. And the easiest way to highlight is to start with any edges on the miniature. For these, you can angle your brush against them and slowly run the brush along that edge creating the highlight. There are going to be places you want to highlight where you can't do this though, so we need to paint a thin line. The problems you're going to face while highlighting are having too much paint on your brush, the paint is too thick or too thin, and how you're holding your miniature. Only highlight what you're comfortable with now, even if that's a couple of edges. You can always come back to it later when you're ready. If you're not ready to highlight this way, then let me show you how you can achieve highlights with a dry brush as well. Dry brushing is a technique people use to quickly get some highlights on a model quickly with very little effort and alongside using washes it's something that is taught to beginners. Start by taking some paint and putting some on the paper towel and then work the paint into the bristles and then you want to remove as much of that paint as you can until it's not coming off onto the paper towel anymore. When you dry brush in, you want to keep your brush moving pretty quickly against the details. And what's happening is the paint is being deposited right onto the edges and raised areas and it's not being allowed to get into any of the shallower details. It's better to build this up slowly until you're happy with it. Even though dry brushing is quicker and easier, it can look a lot messier than painting the highlights directly with a standard brush. But remember, it's always your choice how you paint your miniatures. There's no right or wrong way. Once you've finished highlighting the armour, go ahead and highlight the black details however you want. I suggest making a grey colour with some Corex white and a bad and black. We're going to finish off our space marine now by bringing the metallic details back up to the original colour we painted them. Start with the silver details and then finish up with the gold details. I've gone through a lot while painting the space marine, but everything I've gone through so far are the absolute basics that allow you to paint anything. And if you want to see what you can achieve using these basics, then go check out how I paint this ultramarine after you finish watching this video of course. 
I'm now going to go through the stages of painting the Necron Warrior, but I won't go into so much detail this time. I'll just show you the steps I go through. Start with a dry brush using lead belcher. You want to do this all over the miniature. We're now going to paint all the main sections of the Necron body using Rune Lord Brass and parts of the weapon with lead belcher. And once you've done that, wash the details you've just painted with some Agraxur shade, making sure to let it dry completely before moving on. Give the miniature a dry brush of Runefang steel next to create some quick highlights for the metals. And then after that's done, paint the gun casing using some Abad and Black and then highlight the edges using a grey mix. Now paint any wires, the eyes and gun barrel using Corax White. We're now going to finish off the Necron Warrior by using the Tesseract Glow Technical Paint on all the areas we've just painted the Corax White which is going to create a green glowing effect for our Necron Warrior. Go ahead and paint the bases however you want but if you want to see how I did them, let me show you. Start by painting the bases first of all with a grey mix. Then paint the rocks with Corax White. Wash the top of the base with some Agrax Earth Shade. And then give these areas a dry brush using Corax White. Finish the bases by painting the rims of the base using a grey mix we started with. With the bases done, we've now completed both the Space Marine and Necron Warrior. I really hope you found this tutorial useful and I hope I've been able to show you a great way to get started with the Warhammer 40,000 hobby. Make sure to give the video a like and subscribe to the channel for future content and go check out the other tutorials on the channel and I'll see you in the next video.